coming back, you're down on yourself, things happen differently, and you see what happens when somebody like Zuna is on your team and things are going right. We'll mm -hmm. have to see if that can carry through. Can meet Playground, however, pull themselves back up from behind one game. They absolutely have the ability to do this. Meet Playground are exceptionally good players. They can absolutely turn this one around. You saw them dictate the first 30 minutes of the first game. They for were sure. ahead for a long, long no time. Doubt about it. And this time, they don't have uh, fear, does not have that same crutch they did in game one. They don't have that, if we wait for 40 minutes, we'll win by kind of by default for Kogma. Now, in this case, they've got much more similar lineups here. Meat Playground actually hasn't made that many changes. They've still got the Ezreal, they've still got the Malphite. They've traded the Sona and Shogai from the other roster, but basically, these are mainstay, staple champions. Meat Playground's kind of playing the same sort of game. They're yeah. really playing the same sort of game, and it's just up to them to kind of make the same moves and keep the pressure on because they won early game last time. Well, you know, Freak, that's very interesting. And on top of that, Maybe Mandatory Cloud was focused a lot. He didn't get blue. He didn't get his second blue. And he still did really well on Karthus. So will they choose to focus him again in mid lane? Uh, he's going to be... Probably yes. Oh, um, Man Cloud is something definitely a champion that you can probably get rid of there. The uh, actually they're gonna oh, run an Arthalon. Oh no, Arthalon going into the tri bush. He puts on Ghost right away. No tower dive says Fear. All right, so he's gonna get yeah on back, but this early invade from Fear is very very good. They're gonna trade away. Uh, you know, Meat Player taking their own uh, red, but they're gonna give Smithy the enemy blue, and this is a very good opening for him. He's gonna use a smite on it as well, so he's gonna be able to recover into his own jungle and probably. I think he has a good chance of going three for one on buffs. We have a double lane swap, so it looks like... Oh, no. Yes. Yes. Actually, the ADs are mid. Ah, oh, we have seen this before. It looks like they're going to start setting this up. So it looks like the focus on Man Cloud will be quite hard. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a really big thing, man. Like, Evelyn is going to... I mean, the safe thing oh. about Evelyn is that she'll scale for free, but it's still a risky situation, though, being in a 1v2. NK Inc. can see the edge of that Duskbringer from Nocturne, and he's like, oh, man, I probably only have a few more seconds to do this. I better get it out as fast as possible. It's just within smite range. Throws up the rupture, smites it out, and he's able to make it out as soon as Zex Smithy rounds the corner. That is just unfortunate. You know, he tried to get to that camp as fast as possible. You know, used smite his own blue, took wolves and came down, but yep. five-second windows, man. It's a five-second window. Very nice play there. Looks like X-Hazard just trying to put on some ground slam damage. Uh, they're going quite hard. Uh, not hard on each other, but more than just farming in the early game. You'll see them walking around each other. Balls and Lemon God doing a great job with that Sona poke and the power cords to keep Mandatory Cloud out. But Eve, how is that farming under the turret for her? Uh, it's going to be pretty brutal, honestly. Evelyn doesn't have really good last hitting tools under turret because if you if you don't get with auto attack you have to hate spike and then hate spike puts them all low enough that the turret would have steal them away from you and they're like at half health and that's really hard to last hit from so her goal is to kind of get them like right in front of the turret and like freeze the lane there as quickly as possible so that she's almost immune to harass but can still last hit without the turret stealing wow the jungler is pretty much having the same mindset here they could walk right past each other on either side of the wall. Like Smithy knows he's there. Will they turn? Will they decide to push and walk right past Arthalon? They do. They say Arthalon. Party time. NK Inc. tries to get under the turret. He is feared away. Not too much turret damage being traded around. This could look like a kill. Only a level 2 Arthalon. It does not look like he has pool. A few more shots. One kill there. The turret's on him. They're forced to flash. He does have pool. He just used it. Very crucial time. Great save on that. Really, really nice first blood there, man. That turret dive is something we see so much in two-on-one lanes where they will push to the turret, push to the turret, and then dive right as soon as uh, they get down to the turret, level three to level three, pull the jungler in. And this is what Eve needs. Mandatory Cloud's like, get out of my turret, minions. I need to push this quick. I need to get out of here. And it, can he even sh afford to roam in this lane? They give him Sona as so they can push it into the turret. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to get kills if he roams. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's going to end up losing the turret very, very fast if he doesn't. He made a good move here while uh, Sona Ezreal had right. left in shoving the lane back down and buying his turret some time. But that turret is going to continue to take damage. It's already lost about 200 health so far, and that pace is only going to accelerate as Ezreal gains more damage. So we have the Shen versus Malphite. Both would, pretty, both would fare quite well in the 2v1 if they really had to. But right now they're actually going to be put up against each other as the AD carries go mid. Cho'Gath focusing a little bit towards that Wraith camp, so we may see him coming up. up. The top Nocturne's lane, Arthalon. Mid. Yeah, they are going in onto Arthalon. A little bit of damage, and it looks like he may go down a few more shots. That's the last one under the turret. Zuna being very aggressive with Muffin Cutie, and that's what you can do with the Lulu. 
he just got completely caught out now. And, and the problem now for this is that the lane is frozen in like the worst possible spot here for Meat Plague. And you can see how close the minions are to Fierce Turret. But actually you're seeing Zuna, uh, you know, freeze the lane. Um, he, he buckshotted everything away, but now he's trying to freeze it. I don't know about this. I think he, he shouldn't have used the buckshot here because it's going to start pushing back down. And now you choose one. You either push super hard or you completely zone out the opposition. But he's got to pick one. Kill the turret or deny Vladimir all the experience. So you can see those Vorpal Blades keeping Squid in lane just long enough to fin finalize that into the turret. And we see great grip map awareness by NK Inc. Just knowing, you know, what turret's being pushed in, where he should be moving, what lanes don't need help. And all of these soaking up the most experience in saving lanes. We actually saw that Fear was did a great job, as well as me playground in the beginning, of guarding their turrets and stopping sieges right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing actually how these early um, lane swaps worked. Actually, Lemon got taken a bunch of punishment there. Man Cloud getting fired back on, though. They're going to trade one for one. Beautiful job. He got the last tick in, and here comes Xmithy Freak. The Shen ultimate coming in. Shen is six. Wow, Squid getting into that, and he will go to Flash and Taunt into one more shot to go down the Vorpal Blade for the kill. Boss goes down. How is he six? He was in the solo lane, man. He did wow. not get denied out the whole time. He was there able to farm just over and over until he hit six. And fighting up one-on-one -on -one against Vladimir, Vlad has no way to stop the Stand United, so he will always be able to get out from that. That was crazy. Malphite isn't, or X Hazard, I should say, isn't even six yet. The mids aren't even six. Uh, or Man Cloud's been pushed out as well. So this game is going quite a bit different. However, Fear is starting to pull this one out. Four to one, 9.6 thousand gold to 8.4, seven minutes into the game. A little bit faster here, Freak. We did see kills in the beginning. Let's see if they push down the turrets a little bit faster than before. A little bit of mana for X Smithy, and he's only able to deter Arthlon off of that. All right, this turret's gonna be all theirs. The minion has killed it off for the last hit. And Fear now, the one playing aggressively early on. You can see them making a beeline for their turret because Shogath is coming up to stop them. A little bit too late, unfortunately. But all the early moves definitely going in Fear's favor. Generally speaking, their one-on-ones are stronger here. And they're trying to get that lane swap back in. A very big engagement. Zuna cleansing away the damage. They're on to Ink. The Buckshot comes out and the Exhaust is on. They should pick up a kill here. NK Ink getting close to Vorpal Blade again. Squid comes up with another kill for himself. Zuna, the ground slam. If he can get the shard off, no, the auto attack is going to be the reason for the kill. They are forced to let X Hazard walk away, but with a kill for a kill. Nice job by Hazard actually chugging a health and mana potion there just to get himself enough mana and, and health, shockingly, uh, to be able to survive that engagement but also keep putting the spells down. Uh, yeah, got the seismic shard, had to flash for the ground slam and then just walk just fast enough to land that last basic attack that is what he needed. So Trogath, quite a fast jungler with the spikes, mm -hmm. usually able to get around in the beginning quicker than most, but that Madrid is going to allow Nocturne to get around. We also see the calling coming out. Mm -hmm. He's saying it'd probably be one of the first items as they build into that Aegis, and he got it already. So Nocturne's pace around the jungle, quickening now Freak, and we're probably going to see him in those lanes a little bit more. The paranoia to be up soon. Exactly. Level 6, he's got that. The ultimate is up from cooldown. No flash, but not the worst thing in the world because looking at the enemy team, well, there he is. The paranoia goes in onto mid. They find Lemon God. Sona just so squishy to go down. They may focus balls, but only for a few attacks. That glitter lands to slow him out. That was a really, really good play. This is what you do when you have these big tide-turning level 6 kill spells. You use them as soon as they're available. Squid immediately with the Stand United. Xsmithy immediately with Paranoia. Mancloud, of course, had his ultimate up as well and popped that from Evelyn. And you're going to see that kind of over and over again. As soon as an, ult an ultimate is up, you need to burn that and get a kill for it. So Freak, Fear, pretty good lead here. 2,000 gold and four kills with a turret. But let's we got to remind the audience that this team, composed by Meat Playground, is waiting for level six. They're waiting for the bunch up, and they may, no, not going to find it here. They're not around Dragon, but it will come soon for them, and it's going to be explosive. Yeah, this is really, really good. Fear is just going to be happy for now, but you do have to worry about that 5-on-5 five -five situation. Aside from the Evelyn herself, who's got really great area of effect and can win team fights with that, uh, the Meat Playground team is really one that wants to get into 5-on-5. Five five. So it's interesting because these these teams have swapped roles in a way. And they're going quite aggressive once again onto Lemon God, knowing he just got back into the lane, and they will be able to take him out. The taunt just missing. But they finalize the kill anyways. Squid now 3 0 and 0. He goes for health to start off. This is going to be really, really good. Fear still able to keep the push on. They're 1 for 0 on turrets, and the pressure is now onto this bottom lane. Zuna is going to be able to wave clear quite nicely. The turret could be under siege, but looks like they're a little bit afraid to make the moves. 
Still keeping the pressure on though. Being able to see Zuna does allow X Hazard, X Hazard to freeze that lane top. Kind of have his, uh, a good time by himself. He's up in minion kills, but he is not up in kills. He is down by two in that region. He does have one for himself, so he's got the chalice to sustain in lane. You can see the push he has on. And even Fear is doing a great job of map awareness. Freak, X Smithy goes top to stop this turret attack. Yeah, X Hazard's gonna be pushing for that turret. He's pushing a little bit slow, but there's the ground slam. So he's gonna get like the entire minion wave with one basic. There you go, and it's all gone. A bunch of gold for him. That's one of the best things. Your jungler needs to be so aware of what's happening to the lanes. You saw him see, okay, exactly. uh, Shen is out of lane. Oh, it's pushing up top. I can take that, keep the turret alive. And that's just gold that wouldn't have gone anywhere if he hadn't shown up. Those are really, it's a really smart thing for jungler to do is watch the lanes and react to them. It looks like we could have a dragon attempt coming up here after what would be this dive. They don't dragon have just got too taken. many more. Dra yes, dragon did just get taken. Thank you. They're just going for the dive. Seven to two is the score at 11 and 20 minutes into the game. So one of the earlier dragons we've definitely seen yep. that have been taken throughout the match. That is going to increase the gold. We just saw about a thousand to two thousand now to 17.5 to 13.8. Looks like Meat Playground is going to try to push down this turret and start getting that global gold for themselves. A taunt on to X Hazard. There's going to be Squid all by himself. That Sunfire cape that he's using to be able to split push now in this part of the game is also just shredding through X Hazard Freak. Yeah, well, it's going to be a rough situation for him. He had um, an okay early lane, honestly. He was heads up against Shen, but they lane swapped him because Vlad had such a rough match up there that just the time he had to spend running across the map put him a little bit far down here. And he's going for this sort of offensive build aimed at killing off Squishies. He's got, you know, the Chalice and the Sorcerer's Shoes. Uh, the problem is it's not great against Shen. Oh, the Ignite coming in. Cho'Gath flashing in. So two flashes wasted for this, one from each team. The Rupture goes out. And they also got away with Squid's Ignite. So he actually does not have anything right now. X-Hazard comes back. They may try to engage on something. Paranoia looks like it could be used down bottom here soon, Freak. Yeah, it's definitely up from cooldown. They're looking for this. The turret getting lower and lower, but they won't quite be able to dive this one just yet. They want to get the turret down. They can dive without the turret hitting him. Here's that second minion wave coming in. They actually attack when all the minions are gone, which is quite weird, but the crescendo stops that one. The cleanse is used as well, so a little antsy, I think, by, by uh, fear on that one, and they didn't go soon enough. Yeah, ultimately, you know, they could have waited for enough time to kill off the turret and then to simply go in a little bit later when they could have maybe dived a bit harder. Even still, they did burn Sona Flash, they did burn Ezreal Flash, and they burned Crescendo. So uh, certainly some major cooldowns are down. All the save me buttons are gone from bottom lane, and they can, they can re-aggress later. Paranoia is still up. And with pushing that bottom lane, they know the turret has gone down. They're going to go ahead and focus mid here. NK Inc. does not have his Flash as we just saw him use it. X Hazard returns from base. And there goes Squid, 3-0-0, zero, and zero, continuing the split push. And the really difficult thing is that they haven't done anything to really shut down Evelyn. She's in fact, if you count the heads up one on one, 79 to 68, she's a head of Vladimir. And Vladimir really needs items to perform well here. So in the general case, Fierce would be great. That's an explosion onto Vlad, and they quickly get him with a burst. X Smithy coming around from the side. There just aren't enough words to figure out where these guys are right now. Zuna screaming his lungs out in the background. His fear now trying to turn tail, make it away. They may take a turret on this as well with the three kills they've just picked up. Huge aggression from X Hazard to try and stop the siege. He may find himself in a bad spot, but Freak, great engagement from fear. That was absolutely wonderful. And you saw uh, just sort of the blood in Man Cloud's eyes. When he burned Arthlon's uh, pool and he saw him at like a third elf, he was like, <laughs> he was already guys, running. Guys, we got this. <laughs> Ran forward, landed the ult, immediately paranoia, immediately the collateral damage from Graves. And just seeing those kills and being like, we can dive this turret. That's what this team needs. 14 minutes in now. A very nice fight for Team Fear. The dragon is down. They got one minute and 15 seconds for that to come back up. And with that lead, you can see how many wards they're now starting to place in the enemy jungle. They're making it their own. And this is going to make it so much easier to create those objective advantages and really overall team fights for them. Exactly, man. Just keeping the pressure on here from Fear. You know, you can get to the point, and Meat Plague almost had it last game, in fact, where, you know, they were more early game focused, and they had a couple of really, really good moves in the mid game, but it was the Baron comeback that really stalled them out, where, you know, they want to fight, they want to fight, they want to fight. Ooh, we got stalled, and you just got an extra four minutes on the clock. That's the kind of thing that Meat Playground needs here, where I still feel they have the better late game. Not quite to the same level that Fear had in game one, but they've got the slightly better late game. And if they can kind of stop the bleeding a little bit, apply a tourniquet, maybe some gauze, and then get themselves back um, after the wounds, men, they'll be able to win this game later on. Yeah, it really, you know, 
going back to Prali, losing that game is so much harder than winning two in a row, and you can just see the momentum Fear is using right now. I mean, if Fear could really go through this tournament completely undefeated, man, they came in as really that second favorite behind Curse. They are looking like they're winning right now, but you know, let's take a look at what Meat what Tiger needs to do a little bit more specifically. Yes, they need to catch up for late game, but the cool thing about them is they can fight so well from far away. Um, you know, discounting Cho'Gath, who can at least toss out Rupture and Feral Scream from range. Basically, that, that team can fight from behind a turret and contribute pretty well into a team fight. So, um, you know, a good good defense here is pretty good for them. They can't really stop Dragon here. It's just they don't have the numbers for it, and they can't fight well in open ground. But they'll do a pretty good job under a turret. It makes sense that bunching needs to happen for me playground. It's... It's like, if all those ultis hit, we saw Ezreal ulti in last game missing quite a bit. It's a huge factor in the fight. If that hits, it's going to be great, but it's after an emo play, a hemo plague, if it's after this, it's after that, that's way easier to control and figure out what's going on than if everything just slaps you in the face at once and you're, you're stood there with 10% HP. Squid, back to that top lane free, continuing the split push, increasing that advantage. The Stand United is just about to be up, so we'll see Fear play a little bit more careful here. Until that standing night is up, then they'll probably go for a little bit more sieging pressure. Yeah, there's only one spell that Meat Plague really needs to worry about, and that is Agony's Embrace, the ultimate from Mandatory Clouds Evelyn. Outside of that spell, there's not going to be any one ability that'll be super tide turning against Meat Playground, but Agony's Embrace just does so much. It's, you know, right now 20%. Of everyone's maximum health, it's a gigantic slow and it's a gigantic shield on top of, um, you know, for every champion that she hits. If Meat Playground can spread out enough to not get hit by more than maybe one or two champions from that ultimate, they can turn the fight right around. Oh my gosh, coming in on X Hazard here, using Unstoppable Force to get away, but the chase is there, like you said, blood in the eyes of Mandatory Cloud, but he's forced to give up on the scent there. And we just look at these team. Oh, True Shot Barrage coming through. Looks like they're able to make it out. Freak, we look where the kills are. We look at the scoreboard, and it couldn't be more picture perfect for fear. Three kills on your Shen on top, three kills on your Nocturne, three kills on your AD carry, and even Evelyn has a kill. Six assists on the support. That It couldn't look any better. The two kills still in good spots, but there's only two for Meat Playground. They're unfortunately not getting any of these fights to fall in their favor, or one and one and one. Exactly. This early gold seed is actually, or the early gold surge here yeah. from Fear for those kills is actually contributing quite nicely to their team fights. Normally you want just like the AP mid and the AD carry to get the most farm. You don't do a whole heck of a lot with like a super farm Shen. Yeah. As long as he is better than whoever he needs to one versus one, that's all the items you really need for Shen just to get the split pushes to happen. And someone like Nocturne, you know, Smithy on in the jungle, um, you just tend to build tanky on, on Nocturne on most junglers, and so you don't you don't kill things faster by getting more farm. But what he has done is gotten the Runic Bulwark way earlier than the opponent. So his team fight is well above the team fight of Meat Playground. And so getting into those situations, you know, letting letting Shen hardcore split push, getting extra farm that way, and then immediately breaking into a fight afterwards and using the Bulwark there, that's how you really combine this advantage. Freak, I made a point towards earlier. They are not there still. The Paranoia goes off, and they decide to go in as soon as he doesn't realize that they hit Vladimir off the screen and Zeus balls is right in the middle of everything and he goes down and Smithy makes it out with a sliver. Another turret goes to Fear. They are one step closer to this match in their favor, but Meat Playground still has something to say about it and they are going to stop this turret from going down. Yeah, thankfully for Meat Playground, the, the minions did all die, but now Mancloud is back. Thing is, Hex has going to do a pretty good job on the uh, turret of defending it. So, yeah, no moves available here. They still got the two for zero, though. And just building those advantages over and over and over again, that's really good for Fear. 29,000 to 23,000. It's kind of still a 7,000 gold lead. They have 700 gold on that 29,000. But it's slowly closing. If, if you will anything, it is closing. 19 minutes and 30 seconds. We've seen these matches. We just saw the last one where Fear did a real slow close on it, but it is possible and it can happen here. These are the top teams right now in North America vying for that contract, vying for that spot to change their lives for the next year. It looks like Fear is in the driver's seat right now. Freak Meat Playground, where is their initiation going to come from? 
It's gonna come from, honestly, them them counter-initiating. I don't think they can take a fight unless they know the numbers are on the advantage. Good point. thing is, Squid is flipping yeah. without his ultimate. They could literally start, and it's a five on four. If they do go for this, they land the unstoppable force. The difficulty, though, is that Crescendo, Hemoplague, and Feast are all down. So all they have is unstoppable force, whereas, uh, you know, the major important cooldowns, such as Mandatory Cloud's ultimate and Muffin Cutie's ultimate, those are up. So realistically, the team fight, in a four, and a 5 on 5 is definitely in Fear's favor. Yeah. A 4 on 5, honestly, not the worst thing either because they won't get caught. They can catch that without Squid being there. Such a factor in as soon as Squid got a 4th, so did Ix Smithy. These guys 4 0 and 3, 4 0 and 4. The Bulwark helping them out. Eve going for the Deathfire Grasp to just explode somebody. And like we said, you know, Mandatory Cloud, he got 2v1 to mid, and he still did a pretty damn good job. Absolutely, man. I mean, he's not the best in, in minions, to be sure. Like, he's yeah, got a right. lot of guys who are ahead of him. I mean, Ezreal at 178 is a massive margin. The difficulty, though, is you can't just compare minions. If you look actually at the gold between Balls and Azuna, you see 6,400 to 7,300. So even though he's down 40 minion kills, his, con his contribution to team fights gives him more items. And not, you know, Static Shift just being coming one of those items I think we're going to start seeing. It's picked up on Graves as well. They are doing a damn good job at pushing right now, and they've just excelled that a little bit more. Squid up top, you can just see his presence deters this tower takedown, and it only has about 300 HP left. They are going to start to push back at Meat Playground. And that's going to be really their prerogative here. Now, uh, still no um, runic bulwark yet up for Meat There it is, Lemon God. It's not going to be the focus. The Deathfire Grass Balls is going to go down in this engagement. Collateral damage to Shred. Cloud is down, but his team is very tanky and very much in control. Arthlon has pooled. The escape is only left to his ghost, which is now red debuffed. And X Smithy uses the finalizing paranoia to get in there. The kill still goes to Psycho Squid, or Psycho Squid which is Psycho Sid. And we are going to have a definitive push here from Fear. This is just very, very good for them, man. You can see 14 to 3, they are still pushing on. And this mid game is just all theirs all the time. The cooldowns were used, and it did not win a fight against Fear. That brings them up to 14 kills in this game. Nine, actually, yeah, a lot, 11 above the playground right now. That gold lead increasing just a tad. It's 5,000 as they were trying to close it. We have Dragon going down as well to just increase that a little bit more, Freak. That hurts. Now we're up to eight. Up to eight, man. It's just going to be... It's just them growing. That's all I can kind of say about what Fear is doing is that they are winning fights over and over. They are playing every battle pretty much perfectly. You're seeing Zuna never getting caught, only one death on him. The tanks here, like Smithy and Squid, they're able to initiate and survive everything right now. And so what it is for Fear is really just kind of collapsing onto the map. They've gotten the three outer turrets. They've taken Dragon off the map. Baron is a possibility here, but realistically, I feel like their pushing is good enough that they can just keep pushing and sieging a turret down. It'll feel a lot like the last game, but 25 minutes earlier. No, They've exactly. Got range AD, I was just thinking turrets. that. I was just thinking that. The first game, as I mentioned, you know, yesterday, the baseball references, they just kind of, you know, looked at the first few pitches. And now that these guys know with how the fights happen and who brings what to the table, it's so much quicker right now. Exactly. They've got they've got themselves accelerated to the point where they're in the driver's seat much, much sooner. And so this is them kind of playing the exact same endgame. This, this is how fear ends a game, really. And for the teams out there who, uh, you know, we mentioned this with Epic versus uh, Team Tau Dive TV, where they got an advantage but couldn't quite end it. This is how fear is ending their games. Is They're in this mode where they feel like they can close it out. Let's see what they do. The wards are going down. They have the oracles on Lulu now, Freak. That means good vision. They did get the Shirelias, so they have an extra speed buff as well, and Lulu can target somebody to get out. x has his own speed steroid, so they're not going to use it for him. It's all about, again, saving Zuna here. He has been a huge factor for fear, a great pickup for them. And really, Zuna attributes all that skill to being a player that has been all around in every lane, and he does have great map awareness. All right, there we go. Mancloud finds three. They're going in on this. There it is. It's going to be the ultimate. There's a huge Deathfire Grass Pit along with the ultimate. That agony shreds down balls. The double kill coming in for Mandatory Cloud. They're looking for Arthalon here. The triple kill for Mandatory Cloud. NK Inc. is the next one in line as all of them are on. He's going to flash away to try to just deter. Zuna picks up the fourth. They had the eyes set on Baron Freak. This is going to be theirs pretty much for free. 10,000 gold up. Hazard does not have tools to steal it. And Fear will have five Baron buffs. After that, we'll recall that. They'll buy up. And unless something catastrophic happens, we're going to see Fear be the fourth team joining the North American Season 3 
championship series. And you can just see on the right side there, Fear Punch just concentrated on their PCs. A little bit less from Meat Playground. They are still ready to win this, but they're calm, they're collected, and they're trying to do it in a much different manner. But that fire from Zuna is just explosive right now. Exactly, man. He has been playing so well this tournament. I mean, absolutely, he's been putting up great numbers. He's been playing every team fight well. He's getting a last whisper next up here. Current gold. He's almost got enough for the, for upgrading it right now, actually. Um, and this, as he goes back to base, there's the last whisper. Um, and he is just set to close this game out. He's in wonderful shape with items. 5, 1, and 8. 170 minion kills. He's playing perfectly. Mandatory Cloud, you heard uh, Meat Playground talk about it. Arthlon saying, you know, I've known this guy. Um, and, you know, I'm going to... We're going to ban him out. Well, they didn't seem to ban him out, man. They gave him Evelyn here, and he's been putting up a great performance as well. Things are going down. You can see these Sight Stones now being used. Well, I should say Sight Stone and Wards being used by Fear. They have pings going all over. The blue buff is not even safe to grab without the knowledge of it being had. And X-Hazard is kind of pushed out here. He's backing. So no home guards. Not yet. They're not in the base. So they're waiting their time. They're waiting to buy their time on that purchase. Mandatory Cloud on the backside. He is going to see balls. He is going to want this. They go on to Arthalon. Arthalon's going to have to pull, but he doesn't even have a chance. X Hazard forced to use Unstoppable, and it looks like he's only able to go in and out and get some poke damage in. They want Zuna. The Ignite is down, and they're kind of just sporadically using spells here. They're just trying to break him down. They had a really good combo. Unstoppable force into Rapture, but no one was there to follow up. No ult from Balls, no ult from right, Lemon God. Right. Arthalon was dead. X Hazard taking poke. No Guardian Angels are seen anywhere in the game yet. It's not late enough. It's only 26 minutes, Freak, and you were perfectly right. 25 minutes shifted forward is exactly last game now. And it is going to be the push from Fear. Mandatory Cloud taking a bit of damage. Squid doing everything he can. That Psycho Sid that was in top lane on Shen is absolutely crushing for his team. 5-0 and 8 this game. 4-0 and 9. Just the kills across the board. And a 0-0 and 14 Lulu. I've never seen a better scoreboard for a team. Yeah, perfect support score, 0, zero 14 Now, unfortunately, three deaths in the roster, but realistically, they are playing this one so, so very well. Squid finally getting down that bottom turret and just splitting back up towards his team. And and I'm surprised Fear's playing it a little bit more defensively than I would have expected. There is 1,200 gold in the Shen, though. A squid might be picking up the uh, Wit's End in the very, very near future and turning that into some extra siege power. Right. But they are backing up. They want to go for one more purchase before they end this game. You know, Freak, we talk about Fear. We probably have for the past 17 minutes. But it, it, they're playing great. Meet Playground, not playing bad. They're still in this. It's going to be quite tough for them, though. They're down a lot of kills. They have to get a perfect fight. Baron is up, and this could mean it for them. Fear is completely in control. There's just no doubt about it. We'd love to say that Meat Playground could win this next fight, but it's going to be tooth and nail, like you said before. It's not definitive for them. And right now, there's probably some sweat on their brow that they're looking to get off. Absolutely, dude. And you can just see the oh, push no. coming in. Squid, fine time. Balls right stop. behind the turret. Mandatory Cloud absolutely taking him out. It looks like an Alex E's play right there. He is just mimicking that, and he completely takes down X Hazard as well. All right, here we go, man. Fear, two kills taken down, 47,000 to 32. Zuna happy to take that turret. He'll get a shield later, no big deal. Has plenty of lifesteal, and this could be uh, what gives them the opportunity to close this game out. A four on three on this turret, they're going to push in. Here we go. They're just pushing NK Inc. off. He's not had a chance to fully stack up. Everything is somewhat against them. It, it happens from lane to lane. They went for the bus. The flash taunt in. They're not even giving him a chance to go back to base here. The home guard boots can't even be got, bought to save the base freak. Fear is just taking it to them so hard. And all this momentum from game one is exponential. Oh, and the pause coming out from Zuna. I'm not sure what's going on with them, but unfortunately we have a, a, a quick break here. I don't know if they're, if they're preemptively celebrating or what's going on there, but we've got one inhibitor down. This is Fear really looking like they can close this. Now, X Hazard respawns in three seconds. We've seen Miraculous comebacks. It's going to be difficult, difficult for me, Plegrin, to do it. One Miraculous team fight can buy them some right. time. But we're back in a game, guys. Fear going for this uh, middle inhibitor turret. This is looking... 90% theirs. You know, I've said we've, we've been harping on Fear so much, but they've, they've made themselves the all-stars of this matchup right now. Zuna getting himself focused off to the side as his team wasting MP's ultimates. Meat Playground is now without True Shot. They still have X Hazard to fight, but look how confident Zuna is right now. They are discussing every movement that's happening in the base, and they are now out of this one. 
Okay, so that is two inhibitors down. They're able to reset. Baron buff is gone, so their sustain is a bit lower, but they are still fighting a five on four. They're going to get the minions into this base. They're going to go for this last uh, inhibitor turret. A five on four, even under the turret, still looks good for fear. Smithy is going to be the first one there, shielding away the shard from Malphite. The next hazard's putting himself in an alt position, but he's taking a little bit too much damage before he can get it off. The Fear Tether is there. It looks like uns or the Wild Growth is really going to make an impact there on Eve. It's going to be a double kill. No, Graves picked up the second one there, a double kill for him. Lemon God, the chase from McSmithy, Arthalon to stop that. The inhibitor turret is there. The inhibitor is there as Freak. This is looking grim for me, Playground. And they're going to put the chase on towards Vladimir Zuna, just diving the kills when they Great could be going for the base. But the GG's are coming out from Meat Playground. Mandatory Cloud is godlike. The Surrender Vote comes in. Fear, congratulations, the fourth team in the Season 3 League of Legends Championship Series. Lives have been changed here today in the Riot Studios.